Hey everyone, uh, in this video we're going to talk about two new trig functions, arc sine of x and arc tan of x. So in the previous video uh, I talked about how these came about and what we really mean when we talk about the inverse of a trig function. Um, so check that one out, how we can look at these functions graphically. And in this video we're going to look at them algebraically. So the first function, arc sine of x, um, I'm going to give you the algebraic definition here. We say that um, if I have a function arc sine and I plug in an input x, I'm going to get some output y. So what that means is we say arc sine of x is equal to y if and only if, or this is the same thing as saying that um, sine of y has to be equal to x. So I'm asking myself a question. What number do I have to plug into the sine function to get back an output of x? Okay, so if I ask what is arc sine of x, you're saying, well, hey, what number should I plug into my sine function to get back an output of x? Okay, and there's one additional restriction. We don't just want any answer to this question. We specifically are restricting our answers um, y to be between negative pi over 2, right, so it's at most positive pi over 2, and it's at least negative pi over 2, okay? So I think this will make sense with, uh, with a quick example. Okay, so if I ask you, what is arc sine of the square root of 2 divided by 2? Well, this is equal to some number y, if and only if, sine of that number is equal to the square root of 2 divided by 2. So I want to know what number can I plug into the sine function to get an output of the square root of 2 over 2? Well, I have up here in the top right, so if you look up here, I have our first quadrant trig values for sine and cosine. Um, and so what I can see from this is if I were to plug in pi over 4 into the sine function, I would get the square root of 2 over 2. All right, so this value pi over 4 is in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Um, so the answer to this question right here, what is the arc sine of the square root of 2 over 2? Okay, the answer to this is pi over 4. Okay, so arc sine of the square root of 2 over 2 is pi over 4 because sine of pi over 4 is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so uh, let's do one more really quickly. Um, what is arc sine of negative 1 half? All right, so what I want you to do, if you can pause the video here, before I move on, try to think through this yourself. What is the arc sine of negative one half? All right. So arc sine of negative one half, I'm asking myself, what do I have to plug in to the sine function to get an output of negative one half? Well, if I look up here in my first quadrant values, I do see that I have a one half, but I don't, right? So I don't see a negative one half. Well, what am I gonna do, right? What am I gonna do? So let's think about this. I'm gonna draw a picture. So maybe we can't just look up our value, but maybe we can, can work through this. So if I think about my unit circle, I know that pi over 2 is up here and negative pi over 2 is down here. Okay, so if I rotate in the negative direction on the unit circle, I would get down here to negative pi over 2. All right, so uh, I know that if I were to plug in pi over 3 into the sine function, I would get something that looked like this, right? So pi over 3 would be about up here, and so that's telling me that my y-coordinate uh, there is 1 half. Okay. But 
I know that if I went straight down like this, um, I would be at a similar point, and this angle rotating down uh, is negative pi over 3. Okay, so if I'm down here at this point, this is where I would get a y coordinate of negative 1 half, uh, and that would happen at negative pi over 3. And so arc sine of negative 1 half is negative pi over 3. All right. So I'm going to clean this up. I'll come back and we'll look at some examples for arc tan. All right, so let's talk about arc tangent. So just like we did with arc sine, um, we can look at arc tangent. We'd say arc tangent of some input x equals an output y if and only if tangent of y is equal to x. All right, so this is very similar to the definition that we had for that we had for arc sine. And in fact, we have the same restriction here. We want those y values to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we're going to be doing basically the same thing, except we're going to be working with our tangent function now. So what that means is if I have my reference chart up here of my nice values in the first quadrant, I may actually have to take it a step further and start thinking about the division. Right, so if you wanted to, um, you could go ahead and add a third row um, and put in the tangent function there. That may help with arctan um, if you want to do that. All right, so here's our definition, and let's look at a quick example. Okay, what is arctangent of zero? Okay, so I'm going to ask myself arctan of zero. This is equal to some number y. Well, if and only if tangent of that number is equal to zero. So when does tangent give me an output of zero? And in particular, I want to know what number in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, um, when I make it an input on tangent, gives me an output of zero. So we come over here. And let's check some of our nice values in the first quadrant. Okay, so um, for example, I could look at pi over 4. Um, so I know tangent is sine over cosine. So if I were to take this and divide by this, these are the same. So I would see that tangent of pi over 4 is equal to 1. So that's not what I want. But if I come over here to 0, 0 divided by 1 is 0. And so this is the input that I'm looking for. So an input of 0, tangent of 0, gives me an output of 0. Uh, and that is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we're going to erase this. And we'll write this in. Arc tangent of 0 is equal to 0. Okay. All right, so we'll do one more here. Let's look at arc tangent of negative square root of 3. Okay, so what is arc tangent of negative square root of 3? Well, I have to think to myself, what input to my tangent function gives me an output of negative 3? Or rather, tangent of what is negative square root of 3? So I can use this chart, um, but we're going to have to go one step further like we did before. Um, because these values aren't negative. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think about um, when can I get square root of 3, and then I'll deal with this negative later. All right, so what input could give me square root of 3? Um, so this gave me 0. This gave me 1. So let's look at just the next one here, tangent of pi over 6. Okay, so I'm just going to check this really quickly over here on the side tangent of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half divided by the square root of 3 over 2, okay, and this ends up being 1 over the square root of 3. Okay, so that 
is not what I wanted. So let's try again. Um, we tried this one, we tried this one, we tried this one, so let's go to pi over 3. All right. So tangent of pi over 3 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which is the square root of 3. All right, so this is great. I have a value, pi over 3, that gives me an output of square root of 3. So we're almost there. So I'm going to keep this in mind, pi over 3. But I need some more space. I need to think about how could I get that negative value. Yeah, how could I get that negative value? Well, I know that if I plug in numbers between 0 and pi over 2, I'm going to get these positive outputs like I did over here. That's because tangent is positive in the first quadrant. But if I look at negative pi over 2 to 0, that's the fourth quadrant. So tangent is negative in the fourth quadrant. And so if I were to plug in negative pi over 3, I am in fact going to get an output of negative square root of 3. This is very, very similar to what we did um, for the sine function. All right, so pi over 3, let's clean this up. Okay, so pi over 3 was our number. And so our answer for negative square root of 3, this is going to be negative pi over 3. All right, so if you want to think about it visually, right, so just like we did for the sine function, right, so we had this value up here, we had pi over 3, so we said tangent of pi over 3, this is going to be equal to the square root of 3. Well, if I look at the negative of that value, right, so if I go in the other direction, if I rotate by negative pi over 3, I'm going to be down here. I'm going to get the same value for tangent, um, except it's going to be negative because it's in quadrant 4. So tangent of negative pi over 3 is equal to negative square root of 3. Right, so this is how I get... My value for arctan is negative pi over 3. All right, so I hope these help. I'll see you next time.